Shooting at night is something that a lot of photographers shy away from because they think it's a little bit difficult. They're not sure how to do it because they haven't had the experience at doing it. I love night portraits and night photography in general because I can see it as a way of getting unique images. Images that stand out above everything else. Shots taken through the daytime are very common. There are a lot of images around like that. Night photography tends to be a little bit less common. So your shots tend to look a bit more unique. Also, the lighting conditions that we have at night are very unusual. We've got a whole range of different colored light sources that we can use, and we can be creative with those light sources. The other thing I love about night photography is that I've got a period of time to be creative with each image. Instead of shooting at a thousandth of a second or a five hundredth of a second as I would through the daytime, I've often got 10, 20 or 30 seconds or more to create things, to play around with light, to move subjects or move my camera, to create things that I just can't do through the daytime. Just shuffle, can you shuffle that way a little yep. bit? Yeah, that'll, I'll be okay. Yep, great. Maybe hands up. Yeah, great. I was a bit worried about having the slow there that people might make a judgment about your mental capacity, but I, I quite like. Okay, to get this moon in the shot, I need to drop my aperture right down so that I've got a greater depth of field. I'm just gonna shoot a couple of plates, which means I'm gonna shoot with a different exposure to get that background the way that I want it to. So here comes a big group of girls, so we might get beaten up. So if you don't see us after tonight, you'll know what happened. So I've already established my camera settings, one tenth of a second, at 5.6 ISO 800 and we're just going to vary our flash power to get the light on Indy working well. Okay, It's not easy to get a pelican poo in all of your shots but I'll try as hard as I can. We're going to do a shot here on this cycleway because we've got all of these little reflector poles in the background that you can see behind me. We're going to place Indy about where I am in the frame and we're going to wait till the cars come along. Their headlights will light these reflector poles and then we'll get the tail lights receding down past them. So we get the orange or the yellow of the reflector poles, the white outfit that Indy's got on, and we're going to get those um, red tail lights as the cars go through. So it sounds really good in theory. We'll see if it works in practice. Okay. Yep, like that. All right, we might get you up here a little bit more. I was a bit worried about having the slow there that people might make a judgment about your mental capacity, but I, I, quite, like, I quite like this slow in the shot, yeah. Good. Okay, we'll just wait and see. Here we go. Probably get the same blokes driving past a few times. It's good if we can get a few cars in the shot. Okay, one more. Cars aren't lighting up those um, reflectors as much as I would like, but still, I think that works okay. Just change the framing a little bit. Okay, here we go again. Ah, oh, why? Ah, oh, no, I don't want to complicate things too much. That's great, Indy. All right, here we go. Good. Okay. Some light from the headlights. We've got a few coming the other way, which is good. Here we go. All right. Do a couple more and that'll be it. Okay, here we go. It's good. Yes. All right. Try to keep still. Okay. Here we go. Nice and still, Indy. Okay. I should be telling you how long it takes. It takes five seconds. All right. Okay. I think that'll do us. Pretty good at that um, at that power rub. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, that looks good. Okay, keep looking over that way, Indy. Yep. yep. Great. Zoom in a little bit. Okay, same thing, here we go. Yeah, that's great. Maybe hands up a little bit, yep. That's it. Good. Yeah, great. I'll do one more like that. Yep. No, no, one hand down if you want, that's it. Yep, good. Okay, that's awesome. Just shuffle, can you shuffle that way a little yep. bit? Yeah, that'll, I'll be okay, yep. Good, just so I can get you in that gap, yep. Okay, yeah, just change those poses each time, that's good. Here we go. Yeah, love that low angle. All right, terrific. That's good, now we'll just head over the other side. Now there are a few things that you need to know before you go out and shoot night portraits, just to make the job a lot easier and to get your workflow working so much better. Planning is a big part of it. I like to sit down and plan a lot of my shoots. As you've seen in my other classes, I talk about planning shoots quite often. But particularly when you're shooting at night, it's a good idea to have a plan in place. Plan the location that you're going to be in. Make sure that it's a, a location that can give you a lot of variety. A location that's going to work for the sort of shots that you want. And also think about your subject, who it is that you're photographing. Talk to them about the results that you're looking for. Or the motions that you want them to follow if you're doing a bit of subject movement in your shot. Yeah, that's cool. Great. Yep. All right, can you move down that way a little bit, Indy? Yep. Yep, just want to get a bit more of that blue in the shot. Just look out over my head, I'm going to do some shots from down low. Yeah, good. Okay. Yeah, that looks really good. Stay there. Yeah. Further, yeah. so that I can shoot a little bit more telephoto. So, yeah, that should be good. Get that face towards the light a little bit. Yep. Okay. That's great. Got that moon coming up in the background. Right, and we should be able to get a proper exposure of that moon. So I'm only shooting at 10 seconds. That looks great. Perfect, one more. Okay, that's good. Now I want to get a bit more reflection in the water. So I might move down closer to the water and you can just move down there as well. Yeah, I know, that's okay. I don't want you to fall in. Well, not yet anyway. Okay. All right, that's good. I'm quite happy with that. Okay, to get this moon in the shot, I need to drop my aperture right down so that I've got a greater depth of field. Focus on the bridge. And just shoot like that. I'm shooting at F16, which should give me reasonable detail in the moon, as well as detail in the bridge. As I mentioned in the introduction, when we do night photography, there are a few challenges that we need to meet. One of them is that we're working in the dark. So we need to be able to see our camera settings. We need to be able to focus properly. So we need some sort of light source to be able to do that. Either a head torch or a torch or flashlight that allows us to set our settings and then we can turn it off when we do our exposure. The other thing we need is a camera support generally a tripod, because tripods are very easy to move around, they're easy to locate, they're easy to adjust. So a good quality tripod is going to be a huge benefit if you do night photography. It's not completely necessary, but it's a big help. The other thing we need to think about is lighting. Now, you don't need to spend a lot on lights, 
We can just use the torch or the head torch that you're using to take your shot. We can use available light, street lighting, um, as you'll see in some of the videos in this class. We could use flash. Um, it doesn't cost a lot for a small speed light flash to be able to use to light your subjects, or we could use LEDs. There's a range of different options for us. We do need to be careful when we're walking around at night too, because we could trip over, there are safety concerns. It's a good idea to make sure the place you're going to is safe, particularly after dark. So all of these things are things that we need to put in place and be careful of. But we also have so many opportunities when we do night photography, as I mentioned also in the introduction. We can control our lighting to a huge extent. We can do so many creative techniques when we're working at night. So I've, I've zoomed in here with a telephoto to make that moon a bit bigger. I've just got to balance the light from the flash and the light with the moon. So we'll just try that, aim that at about her waist. Yep. Okay. Yeah, no, that's good. Try again. That's it. All right, no, that looks great, once again. Okay, all right, that's looking good. Um, Indy, can you just turn your face towards the light? Just look over the top of Jen's head, yep. Okay, that's good, one more. Jen, can you get up higher? That's it. All right, yeah, that looks great. Okay, now Indy, can you get down? I'm just gonna shoot a couple of plates, which means I'm gonna shoot with a different exposure to get that background the way that I want it to. So you can move over near Jen. Don't need you there. So I'm just going to um, slow down my shutter speed, not change my aperture. I was on 1 15th of a second, so I'm going to slow it right down to one second. And that will give me an image that I can, I can merge with that shot of India and the moon. Do one more. As long as I shoot on a tripod, everything's going to line up and that should be fine. All right, so we're doing a shot here using these blue sculptures. There's beautiful blue sculptures in the background. We're incorporating some tail lights coming past. As the car comes past, we use a two second exposure like we're gonna do now, Jen. And as the car goes past, it gives us a red light in the background. Just so that we, we didn't do that one because Jen just had the flash against the belly. So we just lit up Jen that time, but she'll be ready for the next one and we'll, we'll get a good shot. So incorporating the blue of the, of the sculpture the red of the tail lights and the warm light all around here. So here comes a big group of girls, so we might get beaten up. So if you don't see us after tonight, you'll know what happened. Okay, I'll just do a test shot. We might have to take that. Um... Uh, actually, I quite like that. Yeah, maybe just get back a bit, Jen, and turn it up a bit. Okay, we'll try that. Here we go. Oh, I'm going to make my shutter speed a bit slower so we get a bit more car tail light movement. So I'm going from one second down to four seconds. So you can hold fairly still for that time, can't you, Indy? Okay, here we go. That's cool. One more. And I'm just gonna just gotta check. Because it's pretty hard for India to stay still for that whole time. She's doing a pretty good job. I might take it down to two seconds and make it a bit easier. Alright. Okay. Here we go, Indy. Ready? Now the blue sculptures are, are lighting and dimming all the time, so we've just got to catch them when they're at their maximum and a car's coming past and Indy looks good. So we've got to get those three things all together. And you've got to get me to push the button at the right time too. 
Now the first sort of lighting that we can use when we shoot outdoors at night is the available light that's there in the scene. Particularly if we're shooting in a city or a township location, we'll have street lighting, we'll have shop lighting, we'll have various different light sources that are around. So you can use those to create your image, as you'll see in the lessons that we have later on. The problem with these lights is generally they're fairly low powered. Um, they look nice and bright when we're looking at them, but when we go to photograph them, they tend to be very low powered. So we're looking at high ISO settings and we're looking at longer exposures and larger apertures. So if you're shooting with a large aperture lens, then that can be a little bit easier. Depth of field can be a little bit of an issue when it comes to large aperture lenses. So I tend to shoot with a zoom lens, with a medium zoom lens for most of the shots that I do. And I don't have a great deal of problem. If you do need to shoot for a longer period, just make sure that your subject is nice and still, leaning up against something or sitting down, just so that there's not gonna to be too much movement in the shot. So using available light is a little bit more difficult, but sometimes it can look a bit more atmospheric. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, we're gonna shoot an available light shot of Indy up on the top of the stairs there. She's gonna be lit by that street light, but because the light's a lot lower than we would normally use in the daylight, I've increased my ISO up to 2000, which I need to do because the light's just too low to get a proper shot without it. I don't wanna use flash, because that'll introduce more of artificial sort of feel to the shot. And because that light's coming from up above, we need to get Indy to look up so that we get that nice light on her face. I'm shooting at ISO 2000, one tenth of a second at F6.3. Okay, that's great, Indy. All right, yeah, love it. That's good, one more. Okay, yep, that's beautiful. I'm just gonna move around so that spotlight's behind your head. Yep, that's it. So we're going to highlight Indy's hair using that spotlight from the back. Okay, here we go. Yep. Once again, nice and still. Yep. Stay there. That's it. Good stuff. Okay. Yeah, that's looking good. All right, I'm just going to switch to a vertical format so I can get that light in the shot as well. Okay, that's great Indy, here we go. Yep, nice and still, yep. Okay. I'll just alter that a little bit. Just tidying up my composition a little bit. Okay, here we go, yep. Just tilt that head back, looking up, yep. Good. One more pose, something a bit different. Yep, you need that, that chin up, yeah? That's it. Okay, that's terrific. We'll shoot a couple more. If Robbie falls in the harbour, I want to get a shot of it. Here we go. Okay, that's great. All done, we'll move on. We could get a shot of Indy pushing her nose up against the glass. That might look really cool. <laughs> So heading back down to 800 ISO. Okay, Jen, ready? Here we go. Yep, that's good. Just zoom in a little bit more. So, Indy, just turn your face towards the flash. Yep. Okay, here we go. Yeah, that's good. Jen, drop it down to um, quarter power or whatever. And Indy, just back a little bit. I want to be able to see that, that um, reflection in the water. Okay, here we go. Yeah, good. Can you turn away from us and then look back over your shoulder at us? Yep. That's it. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Can we do a couple without the jacket, please? Okay, yep, that's perfect. Yeah, here we go. Good, back around the front again. Maybe the knee across in front. Yeah, just 
turn your face a little. Yep, it's a bit of hair sticking up on this side at the back. Yeah, that's it. That's good. Sometimes I get little bits of hair sticking up too. Let's push that knee across a bit. Yeah, that's it. Good. Great. Look up at the rich people in the apartments. Yeah. That's great. Okay, and one last one. Yep. All right. That's good. We'll move on. All right, what we're going to do here, we've got this big mural on the wall behind Indy. We're going to light Indy against that wall, but we're going to have our flash coming from down low, which means it's going to throw a large um, shadow of Indy onto that mural in the background. So it's not going to be particularly kind light on Indy, but she needs to look a little bit gruesome every now and again. When we do these shots, then she looks a little bit scary. So we're going to light her from below and throw that big shadow on the background. I need to darken that that mural down a bit. So if we check our settings, I'm going to take my shutter speed down to a 20th of a second. Can we get you further back? Yep, okay. That's getting a bit better. Okay, back further still, yeah. That's it. Okay, that's looking better. All right, now, um, we'll just get you to move across a little bit so you're right in the middle of his eyes, or her eyes, whoever it is, yep. So I went feet apart, yep, hands on hips, and maybe some big um, hands up on heads and stuff like that, okay. I'll just check this flash to see if we've got it right. Okay, that's cool. Now, Jen, yep. can we move that flash in closer, please? Because we want to get that shadow a bit bigger. Yeah? Here? Yep. Okay, let's try again. All right, that's working a bit better. All right, so we have overexposed Indy a little bit, but it's not enough there that we can't pull it back later on in post-processing. I don't think so because we need the power to get the, the light. to get the shadow. Yeah. All right. That's good. Now I'm just going to switch to a vertical format. That's it. Zoom in a bit more. That's looking good. Okay, so, yep, a couple of those poses, good. Maybe hands on hips and stuff, yeah. That's it, yep. Feet apart, long way apart, yeah, that's it, good. Yeah, great, just look down at the flash, yep. Maybe lean forward on your knee a little bit, yep, okay. All right, that's cool. Do that same pose, just shuffle across that way a little bit. Yep, that's it, here we go. All right, yes, shuffle back that way, tiny, uh, too far, yep. All right, try that. I could just move the flash, but it's easier to get you to do it. <laughs> that's looking great, okay, one more. All right, we've nailed that, that's good. You wanna come and have a look? Yep. It's, it's flashing a bit, just telling me that the highlights are um, a bit overexposed, but oh, I can yeah. fix that up. Awesome. Yeah. So I think moving in closer like that worked really well because it, the cool. face looks yeah. really big. That's yeah. a great pose. Yeah. Okay, see everybody oh, likes yeah. my shots. That's good. <laughs> All right, so I'll just do a test shot there and see what exposure I've got. I'll drop this, uh, my shutter speed down to one tenth of a second. Just do a test. Um, and it's still looking a little bit dark, but I don't want to overpower those lights. I don't want to um, have those lights blow out down the bottom. So I think we'll leave it at about that. That should be pretty good. All we need to do is light Indy. And the basic thing that we do, we know when we're shooting flash, our camera settings determine our background and our flash power determines the light on our person. So I've already established my camera settings, one tenth of a second, 
at 5.6 ISO 800 and we're just going to vary our flash power to get the light on Indy working well. So we'll do a test shot here, Jen. Here we go. All right, so that flash power is a little bit too bright, so we'll just turn it down a bit. Okay. And we should be right. Okay, here we go. Here we go, Indy. That's great. We've got a perfect pelican poo right in front of your foot. Is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's not easy to get a pelican poo in all of your shots, but I'll try as hard as I can. Okay, once again. Okay. All right, that's great. Love that, actually. I might do a vertical shot of that. Yep, now I'm going to get you to come forward, please. We've got Indy moved a, bit, a little bit further forward because I want her bigger in the frame. I'm shooting up at that building, so she's going to look really grand. I don't want her to look down at the camera, though, because if she looks down at the camera, her eyes are going to be closed. So I want her to look above my head, out to the building across there. Yep. Okay, that's great. Here we go. Yep. Just turn your face across that way. Yep. That's it. Good. That's it. Okay, can you turn your shoulders that way for me and keep your face that way, yeah? That's it. Terrific. All right, that looks great, Indy. That'll do us, I think. That'll wrap us up. Yep. Good stuff. Thank you for that. can run through some of these for you, Indy, so you can have a look before you go. Um, That's a really cool location. Yeah. Love that low angle as well. Yeah. Here's just the test shots. And those ones back against the wall. Yeah.